What's up? This is your boy Styles, WestCoastStyles.com, as you can see right here on this wonderful hat here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Everybody's sir. asking me for one of these hats. We don't have them on sale in the in the store, but we'll probably get them there soon. Uh, anyway, man, we got a special guest in the house today. We got my man TJ Santana. What it do? What it do? Some of you on the West may know him, some may not, but you're gonna get a good history lesson because. This brother's been involved in the scene for years. And he's been involved with some of the biggest names here, you know, and we're going to get into all that. Yes, sir. Um, so, man, so before we get into your return to the music scene, let's talk about the Young Hogs for a minute. Okay. Now, to me, the Young Hogs are an important part of the West Coast. Mm -hmm. and they're very forgotten and underappreciated. But there was a time especially, you know, in the, in the early 2000s and mid-2000s and even up to the, the the late 2010, whatever, you guys were on the scene and doing your thing. Right. You know, writing for some of the biggest names, putting out music. Um, man, you know, so tell us about the group, The Young Hogs, and your legacy. Uh, well, The Young Hogs um, is it, it's, it's, it's six members in The Young Hogs. Um, unfortunately, in 2003, we lost one of our members, uh, Nutty Nutso. Um, but, I mean, the Young Hogs, I mean, we've been on Death Row albums, MAC-10 albums, Key to Rock albums, Kill Kill albums, House of Wax soundtracks, and and a whole host of things. I mean, the Young Hogs is just, it's, uh, it's five cats from Compton and one from L.A., and you know from different areas and we all came together um most of us met in as kids in elementary uh -huh. so i met in junior high school and 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 and, and we've been rocking ever since wow that's pretty dope i mean now you mentioned from different areas of compton uh -huh. Some people may not understand that those are areas that may not have certainly gotten along. No, mo most definitely, most <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, particularly uh, like majority of the group members and Killer Kane. Like to this day, their neighborhoods unfortunately are you know at each other's heads. And mm -hmm. I mean, the crazy part about it is, it's like we all went to junior high school together, so it's like even the older generations, some of them went to the same elementary. It's just, once you went to high school, th things just change. And mm -hmm. like, it's, you know, it, it's, it's unfortunate, but I mean, that that's just what it is. And, but as far as the group, like everybody just put that to the side and it, it was about the music. It was yeah. about, the, about the, about the brotherhood. And everybody yeah. from from the different neighborhoods, they understood what we were doing, and they seen the potential and what we had. So it's like, man, y'all going to do that? Yeah, and we've been rocking. Yeah, and even you, I know you didn't mention yourself there, but I know you have a nutty affiliation going on there. <laughs> well, well, yeah, no, I mean, no, I don't, and that's the thing. Oh. I, I, I don't like that's, you know, Shane, T Mac, and Nutso. Me, I'm from. From the east side of Compton. Oh, okay. They're on the west side. Mm. Killer Candy from the east side. Taboo from the east side of LA. So it's like uh people always try to, you know, and not even try to, but it's just the young hogs. Oh, they from Nutty. But it is not some some of the members in the group don't even get along with that neighborhood. Uh -huh. But it, you know, we've been rocking, we've been knowing each other since, like I said, elementary, junior high school. And, and and we've been rocking, man. And when 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 it's genuine and people know that it's real, mm -hmm. it's like, man, that ain't that that was never the focus point. Mm -hmm. Now, was it all crip or or some of these, some? Okay. Yeah, no, it, it it's all crips. I mean, but we have uh a, actually an unofficial seventh member of the Young Hog Six Mill, which he's a you know a a well known blood. So mm -hmm. it, it, as far as like the colors, that was never our thing. Yeah, like we rock out with six mil to Black Tex, Mossberg, like that's how we even linked up. So it and it it, it was never about the red and the blue. Yeah, um, it was just about it was always about the music. Yeah. Now, you guys formed 
and um, man, you guys, you guys started writing for Mac Ten, basically, correct? Not writing for Mac Ten. Um, we were we were doing writing. It was our Mac always wrote his own material. Uh -huh. Now I know Booby wrote some hooks for him, uh -huh. but we never wrote Mac Ten. Okay. We never wrote anything for like Mac Ten. Other probably like hooks. But stuff like that but no no raps nothing like that okay um yeah we we it started off as like we nutty nuts so um davy wave which is mac 10's role manager uh him and nutty nuts so they're related and you know we was doing our thing with the dirty west mistakes and actually that was even before then we was just doing our thing period yeah um uh, because that's when we had the song with mossberg and unfortunately, you know, his time he passed, but you know, Wave Wave heard it. And he was like, you know, Mac 10 was doing his album, and he like, man, I want y'all to come through. We came through, and you know, he liked the vibe and was like, All right, well, I'm doing this uh my, my album. I want y'all to do a song. Mm -hmm. So we did the song with Mac and we never left. We just kept coming back. He kept telling us come back and come back and come back and we ended wow. up with several songs on his album, and 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 that's that's how it happened. Wow, yeah. that's pretty dope. Yeah, and even but even before the end, uh, Shane and um, Drayster, they was on a song with Dub C. The on the uh, I'm trying to remember what, well I don't remember was it a soundtrack or it was it was something. But Shane, Young Shane, he had him and Drayster. They was on a song with Dub C. Mm -hmm. uh, Ooh, I can't even think of the record right now, but and that was even before Mac Ten. Yeah. Now I first heard you guys. I think it was about two thousand three, two thousand four. I had my homeboy Chili Chill, the dude that used to DJ for Ice Cube. Uh -huh. He was putting out. He put out a mixtape, and oh. you guys were on it. Yeah. And yeah. I yeah. remember I was like, I need to find who these guys are. Yeah. I told him I go. I hook me up with these dudes. You know, when I heard that song that was on there, I was like, man, because I was always looking for talent on the come up. Right, right, you know, right. On the West Coast, you know. You was doing so West I, Coast I, Brian, I, heard, right? I heard and I saw you dudes, and I was like, yo, who are these guys, man? And finally, I, I was able to find out, find you, you know, eventually, you know, yeah, through other sources remember, and stuff. I can't even remember how, because I actually linked up with, I, I think I was, met Chili Chill. I can't remember how. But I, it was probably at a video shoot, and we was just chopping it up, and, yeah. and 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 that's how that linked up. Yeah, but I remember I first heard you guys. I was like, man, the you know these are these dudes are are on the come up, you know, and I, I need to find out who they are. You know? Yeah, and uh, it was dope that how we were able to actually our paths were actually able to link up, you know. Right. Uh, uh, man, and okay, so you you know, so you did your thing with Mac Ten. Uh, mm -hmm. What happened after that? Um, after Mac Ten, uh, well, even even before Mac Ten, we had the uh, we had the title track on a Death Row album, Two Gangsta for Radio. That came out two thousand one. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Okay. That came out with, in two thousand one. Yeah, yeah. So we, we we had the title track, Two Gangsta, on Two Gangsta for Radio, um, hosted by Julio G. Uh, we had the title track with Drayster on the Death Row 2 Gangster for Radio. Yeah, so, but after Mac 10, I'm trying to remember. After Mac 10, that's when we start doing the Dirty West mixtapes. Mm -hmm. And and that 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 was pre-internet, but we, we had the streets on fire. Yeah. We had the streets on fire with those mixtapes. And, like, we was just going in people's hood, like Robin Hood, just... Still in front of rich, giving to the poor, and I mean, like I'm talking about, we had boxes, boxes of CDs, just pulling up in people's hoods. Yo, young heart, they like, man, who is just hopping out? Like you go a box, and they coming to get them, and just they just passing them out everywhere we went, just passing out CDs, passing out CDs, ain't selling them, giving them away for free, and and mm. just the music, that dirty west, dirty west mixtape, I still get asked about it to this day. Where is where can I find it? Do you got a copy? And <laughs> no, dead serious, dead serious, dead serious, nice. dead serious. 
Yeah. So I mean, but after that, you know, I think after that we um I started working at um Edmonds Entertainment. Um doing uh A and R work over there with Bernard Alexander, who was Rodney Jerkins manager at the time. Mm-hmm. Um and we was we did uh projects we did the uh America coming together. It was like a we are the world type thing. Uh, it had Missy, Nate Dog, it was a whole lot of people on it. Um and we end up doing um they had a they had a movie called House of Wax stars starring Paris Hilton. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah. And um and they needed a song for this one slot for this one spl- a slot. And they knew that I rap and it was like, yo, can you and your group, can y'all come up with a song and have it for us in the morning? Cause like, we need to turn this into, I don't, I think it was Paramount or whoever, whatever studio it was, like we need to turn it in in the morning. I left, I left work early. We went to the studio all night, ex- executives calling, yo, let me hear the song. Let me hear it over the phone. Cause they, they, they got to turn this in. Yeah. And they already made the promise. Like, yeah, I got somebody on it. We did it. We turned it in and we we made the album and the score inside of the movie. We had the only rap song on the move in the movie and on the soundtrack. <laughs> it was crazy. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Now I remember um you talk about bringing people together. Uh Man, I remember the time where you had uh, the studio in Sun Valley that you guys uh, had had, had uh, bought for the day. And right. you guys were going to do, we're all in the same gang part two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had Crooked Eye, Glass yeah. Malone, Bishop Lamont, mm-hmm. uh, Gorilla Black. Spider uh, Low. Man, man, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was, a, it was, it, it was star studded. I was there that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, yeah, you know, and I, I was able to document that for West Coast Riders. And I still have pictures of, of I have some of the pictures for that still. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, and there was a whole bunch of people. I, Jelly Roll was there. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Man. Um, it, it was it was star-studded. It, everybody came through. I mean, it was a lot of people on the record. And it was a lot of people just in the building, just from the word spreading that this is what we was doing. It, it it was a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, your cousin was there, rest in peace. Oh yeah, Pop Gates. Yeah, yes yeah, sir. Pop yes, Gates sir. was there, yes, you sir. know. Uh, yeah, uh, it, another legend that 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 uh, doesn't get mentioned enough, in my opinion. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, but the the all in the same gang too. Um, it was just at that time, like that was you know like the New West movement, and that's when that that whole movement was going on. And um, and I just came up with the ideas like, man, like everybody talking about the new West and the old West. And it was like it's like the old, you know, the older uh, guys wasn't really like pulling us in. So, we, you know, we started doing our own thing. And that's how we came up with the new West movement. Um, and like just the ideas like, look, let's just come together. What we, we all know and love all in the same game. It's like, yeah let's just do this and let, let's just try to bring it together. And it was a beautiful thing. Um, Julio G premiered the record. I can't remember. I don't know if he was on K day or the beat where he was, you know, cause during that time it was a lot of swapping of the stations, but wherever he was, he premiered the record on the radio. Um, he played it the first day and he kept playing it. Then a few days later, you know, the plug got pulled from up under us because we didn't, handle the business aspect of it as far as clearancing. And it was just like, yo, this is what we wanted to do. I had a relationship with Julio G because I was on his album as well. Yeah. I had the song on his the album. The name was, was, was trademarked by someone else. Yeah, it was trademarked by someone else and we didn't get, well, I ain't gonna say we, I was the head of it. So I didn't get the clearance. Um, And Big Y actually, Big Y was actually on the song as well. Yeah, that's right. Big Y yeah, had the relationship with uh, my conception and who owned the rights to all in the same game. Um, you know, and Big Y got a call and then he hit me up and was like, yo, Mike kind of tripping. You know, we ain't go through, you know, whatnot. Uh, me and Y had a meeting with um, 
uh, who uh, this one of the guys from from the Crips and Bloods who I think is Mike's nephew. Um, but you know, we met up and he was just like, man, like I'm gonna holler at Mike and see what it, you know what we can do. And Mike was just like, nah, like pull the plug and he called Julio directly and pulled the plug on it. And you know, Julio was like, man, what can I do? And it's like he on the rights to it. And you know, I respect Mike and just make that was a lesson learned. Like, yeah, make sure you have when you when it's a situation and somebody else, make sure you have all your clearances because they can pull the plug on you. Did you ever consider just changing the name? No, it? no. It, 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 any other, we talked about that, but it didn't make sense. Like it, not for what it was. Like it was, it, we were paying homage because we love, everybody love all of yeah. the same game. And I, we, we took it as a, just like, man, like, like, then like they don't see the vision or what we trying to do is, you know, it's the younger classmen. And, you know, Mike just like, nah, like y'all didn't come to me and he shut it down. Do mm. you still have the song? I still have the, I still have the session. Now I haven't been doing music in years. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, we'll go. Yeah, no, no, right, no. But I'm, I'm just, just about to say, like, coming back, I, you know, I start going through my hard drives. I just seen the session files for that song maybe wow. about three days ago. I still have. It. Maybe you could slide it on over to somebody that you know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, it, at this point, I mean, I me. That's uh, history, though, man. It is history, you know what I mean? But just out of respect, like like Big Y, uh, during that, I mean, he actually got me on the phone with Top Dog. and Because Top was, he, you know, they was all, that, that was their thing. And, and he was just like, man, like Mike. You just shut it down. So just out of respect, like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even touch it again unless it, it went through, it went unless it went through that channel. Any, anything other than that, it, it'd be disrespect, and that's not what I'm about. Yeah, I understand that. That's a yeah. shame, though. I mean, because man, I, you know, I know that people would love to hear that, you know, and love to hear, you know, crooked eye snap on that and bishop yeah. and yeah. glasses Malone and. Uh, yeah, you know, and so forth. You know, what yeah, I mean? nah, it, it was it was a it was, it was a dope it was a dope record, man. Like um, everybody, they did their thing on it because they it was already a hit. So you can't come whack on the song. It's already a hit. Yeah, you already know that. And then you looking around, you got Gorilla Black, you got Glasses Balone, Bishop Lamont, Spider Low, uh, Crooked Eye, Big Wide, Young Hog, Six Mill. You got. And whoever else I can't even think of right yeah, now. Yeah. Like it was it was a whole lot of people on on that song. Like you you, you was coming with your A game. I think Spitfire was even on there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Spitfire, yeah, yeah. Spitfire yeah. was was yeah, you know yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. another name from back then. You know? Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, YG who uh, Hootie. He was in the building. It was it, it was a whole lot of people in the building that day. It, it was a great thing, man. <laughs> it was a great yeah. thing. Yeah. I remember another moment that I want to bring up. This is like 2005. Uh, Glasses Malone just got signed to Sony. Mm -hmm. And I was interviewing him outside of, I forget what the place was. I think it was out, It was a record store where Styx was holding uh, 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 his free, his. Uh, oh, yeah. The, his uh, battles. the pit. The pit. Yeah, the pit. Yeah. You, I think it was in Santa Monica somewhere. You guys were out there with Glasses Malone. Yeah, and I was interviewing him, and he was bigging up you guys, and he actually said that he was signing you mm -hmm. to his label, right? That y'all was gonna put out an album and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was another moment that was huge. Um, I, you know, why don't you talk about that a little bit? I mean, I know the album never came out, but yeah, you know. So we had the album title, album full of singles. Um, like you said, Glasses had just got his deal. Um, and they gave him a label situation and, you know, with his deal. And of course, like we've been knowing glass childhood friends. Like I love glasses, his mother, his mother pulled up to my house playing the Mac 10 album. I didn't even know it was out. I didn't know it was out. 
because it wasn't supposed to come out to the, the month after. Yeah. Glass's mother and his brother pulled up to my house playing my verse on a Mac 10 album. And like, this is the relationship that we have. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it was like, he, you know, he had a situation like, yo, this is, you know, what it is. Um, it was going through uh, Universal, uh, RBC, and, you know, it was, we turned in the album, but, you know, what, it was a lot of merging, merging going on at that time, and, 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 and it just didn't work out. Like, we just got caught in that. It, it's like we, we kept getting there, but it just, something always happened. Like, yeah. this, you know, his situation, it fell through. And um, we, the album just, it never came out. Yeah. I remember I interviewed you guys several times about the album full of singles. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and then, um, and man, I was hoping to really hear that album, you know, because, man, man it, it was an album full of singles. It was an album full of singles. Like, it <laughs> to, to this day, like, we can release that album to this day, and the music, it's still relevant. The, the 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 content, the the music, it, it when it's authentic and it's just genuine, it's timeless. Like we can release that album today and not change anything on it, mm-hmm. and it will still fly. Like it, it it's 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 a it's a dope body of work. It's a real yeah. dope body of work, and, and like we would have loved for it to come out through you know the glasses to do it with his situation uh you know and actually he was with sony and then you know he, things start changing and it was we just got caught we got caught in that web yeah yeah um, same thing with the mac 10 situation when our album was supposed to come out on who banging uh, that's when with that situation is the west side connection broke up that's yeah and the West Side Connection second album came out on Who Bang It. They stopped promoting it, stopped, you know, and the label was like, shit, we took a loss. Was everything else is is done. And and but you know, like and 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 for us in that situation, that was our fault because Matt kept telling us, turn your album in, turn your album in, turn your album in. Like, man. Once we turn it in, you know, it's already in the pipeline at that time. Once you once you're in the system, it's coming out. Yeah. You may not get the full promotion you was gonna get, but your album is coming out. And you know, we kept wanting to add a new song, change this, change that, and the situation happened and it was never able to materialize. Mm. Now I know afterwards. You guys did some mixtapes like with DJ Warrior. Oh yeah, you know, trying to get your, you know, your yourself back out there again. Uh, so it just another label situation just never materialized or what? Well, no, the um, I'm trying to remember with Warrior. I don't really remember what happened with with the whole Warrior situation. Um, I think it had something to do with Warrior. It wasn't really us. I I don't really remember what yeah. what took place. Um, you actually just reminded me of it. It's like, damn, yeah. It, well, I yeah, because we did an interview at Universal Studios. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. When, when, when it was you guys, War, DJ Warrior was there. Yeah. I was there. Red One was there. Yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, so I remember the interview, you guys promoting that mixtape that y'all was going to do and stuff. Yeah, it, and I can't remember exactly what happened with D, DJ Warrior with that situation, but we end up putting it out the same uh mixtape with uh dj rafiki Mm -hmm. um and like again at that time i actually he was at power 106 at the time um because that's what we actually went up there and and let him hear the album and and he was like let's do it so we end up putting out the wire mixtape with um dj dj rafiki um up at power 106. gotcha yeah. But no other labels came after you guys after that or, or what? Nah, 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 nah. The after then, I think uh I actually did a a solo deal with 
um, RBC Universal. Mm -hmm. That's when I put out the single with uh, featuring Mac Ten. It first it was um, Hot Dollar on it, then we did a remix with Mac Ten, and that's what we put out through RBC Universal. Was the um, my Get Money? It was TJ Santana, Future, and Mac Ten, and uh, Cocky Creek. Well, she go by uh, Cock Pistol Creek now, but yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that was that. That was you know just just trying something different, you know, based on the relationship I had with Mac, and you know I reached out to Wave, and he was like, uh, you know, Mac said he cool with it, shot it to him, he did the verse, shot it back, and. We put it out through uh, RBC Universal. Mm -hmm. Wow. But so the group kind of like just everybody kind of went their own way or what? Yeah. You know, start doing solo stuff and um, that, that, I mean, we've always been together, but it's just like, you got to think styles. Like you said it at the top of the interview, we talking back 1997. That's when, the first members of the Young Hogs was with Dub C. They was up on the Dub C at first. And I think the first commercial, like professional thing that we came out on was, like I said, that was what, maybe 1990. Now we're talking from 1990 to 2010. It was already like a 10, like us going and, like you get exhausted. I mean, just, just natural human beings and life happened. We start having yeah. kids and thing life happened. And you know, everybody start moving to different areas. So now we have responsibilities. We don't have the, the leisure to be in a studio, eight hour sessions for a month straight. We don't have that leisure no more. And it, it just, everybody just start doing their own thing. Yeah. You ventured off into your own thing. I know that you got into the t-shirt business. Yeah. I yeah. Like you're promoting that heavily. Yeah. And you started doing very well for yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I got South Bay t-shirt printing in, in the city of Hawthorne. Um, it started off, you know, just doing like, because um, I had the, the brand um, Be Authentic. It started off, I was just putting, you know, how authentic on hats and selling them and end up getting um, machines to print for myself. And, you know, it just really wasn't moving how I wanted to move. And then, you know, just came up with the idea like, well, you know, print for other people to create revenue. Yeah. And then, you know, it it it, it took a down slope. You know, we shut it down for for a few months and then you know it came back and once it came back it, it just been on the incline you know what i'm saying and, and you know it, it, it's the t-shirt business t-shirt printing business shall i say it provides a service so i i don't market towards other like individuals i market towards other businesses because yeah. businesses they're always hiring they're always having events and then they're coming in bulk so you know, I got contracts with Mattel, uh, Toyota, uh, Cedar Side, Cedar Sinai, Kaiser, uh, AT and T, T Mobile. Like these are the the contracts that I deal with. Yeah, printing for the entire Manhattan Beach Unified School District. Manhattan yeah, Beach. I I saw that you were doing well because I you know I'd see your Facebook page and. And you and your wife would be going on vacations and <laughs> cruises and, and this and that. And then I'm like, this, I go, yo, this t-shirt business is, is rocking if he's doing yeah. all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's man, a t it's, it's been a blessing. And, like, coming next week, um, I just signed on. CBS is going to be filming a, um, a new TV series. Uh, I can't think of the, the name right now. But they're going to be filming here at the shop next week. Mm. Yeah, and it's going to come out on CBS. Man, I need some West Coast Riders, West Coast <laughs> Styles uh, t-shirts, brother. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. And I, and I heard you when you said that at the beginning. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw my bid in there. All right. All right. Yes, I'm going to have you talk to Junior. We'll figure that out. Yeah. But the, what, it's, it, the cool thing is that you, you've actually made a return back to music. 
Yeah. Okay, so what brought this on? Uh it just came like God. I'ma just I'ma give all glory to God. Like and like one of my homeboys, he just um he just got out of jail. Um uh, Tyrone Ray, little thug. Well, big thug, I sh I should say. Um, he just got out of jail, man. And and that's the thing, like when I like we really come from this styles, like and my, my my boy been in lockdown since I want to say 1997, 1998, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. He just got out in 2020. Wow. These are my friends that some dead and did 10 years, 20 years. I got a man like this is, is real. But, um, you know, he got out and somehow he, you know, he got in contact with game and, um, you know, it was, you know, and game acting like, yo, man, what's up with TJ? And, you know, I've been looking for him and, you know, word got back to me. I reached out to him like, yo, what's up? He um he hit me right back in the DM like, yo, this is my number. FaceTime me. Wow. Right away. And, you know, I FaceTime like, man, what's up? He's like, man, I've been looking for you, man. Like, what's what's going on? What you got going on? And I'm like, you know, I ain't really been doing music. He like, nigga, fuck that. Man, send me something. Let's, I, you know, I got something in the works and I'm trying to put something together. Let's make it happen. Wow. Like, All right. And I had this this record already, um, produced by Rick Rick Rude, you know, and Rick Rude did Destiny Child, Cater to You, Buster yeah, yeah. Rhymes, Mariah Carey, Rodney Jerkins, the list goes on. He he got platinum plaques, and um, you know, I shot at the game, and he heard it. He said, "Give me twenty four hours. <laughs> Give me twenty four hours." And that's when, you know, I went on my DJ Khaled. Yo, I just talked to Game. He said, give him 24 hours. We going to mm. see. And, you know, and that's when I started doing, you know, promoting it. Like, yo, he said, 24 hours, how much time we got left? And he came through and he shot the verse. And when I heard it, I'm like, okay. And, like, my verse, I already had the verse wrote. You know, yeah. I, I haven't recorded, but I had the verse. The hook was already there. I went and laid my verse and then, you know, send it back to him, let him hear it. He like, it's it right here. And, you know, it's a it's a remake. I can't give you too much, but it is a remake um, of a classic Death Row record that everybody mm. loved. That everybody loved it. The song is already a hit. Wow. When are we going to hear this thing? What, what's the what's the timetable on this? What's 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 In, what's. In the perfect world, I want now. I really don't like doing it like saying because you know I don't want to be the Kanye of it's coming out here and then it's yeah. Don't. No, I but, don't want. I don't want. I I know no, you no, can't no, really no, give but us what I'm going to say. Like, in, in the perf in the perfect world, I want to have the song released for Labor Day weekend. Okay, we talking. That's what is that? Three, four weeks. That's a month in four weeks in a month. Like that's. In my perfect world, uh, you know, okay. me and my team, you know, we, you know, we were shopping it up uh, last night, and you know, I told him like, "Yo, this is this is in a perfect world. This is what I want." And mm -hmm. in order for, and they like, you know, okay, well, if that's what you want, in order to make that happen, we need to execute this, this, and this, and this, and this, to make sure that we can secure that. So, um, that's. That's what I would love to have the soundtrack for Labor Day weekend yeah. because it's a it's a it's a feel good summertime record. It's it's just good energy party backyard barbecue. It's it, it's that it's going you know it, like I said it's a classic death row beat that mm -hmm. everybody loves. It's already a hit, and we murdered it. Mm. We did. All right, let, me, let me run a scenario by you. Okay, let's say this record blows the fuck up and takes off like you can't believe and and you're back in the game. What what what's with the follow up? They always say you gotta have a follow up to a hit, you know? <laughs> hmm. Styles, I tell you. Now this I cannot I'ma just say this. The follow up, my portion of the song is already done. I can't tell you right now who's featured on it. Okay, well, I'm just, I just want to know. But yo, know, it's no, you, but listen you have a plan when, though, right? Listen, listen to me, Styles. Okay, listen to me when I tell you 
It's big. Wow. It's big. It is just not it's not ready yet, but it's big. Okay. I'm 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 so you have a plan though, is my is what I'm asking. Oh yeah. yes. Okay, okay. This the follow-up, the second single, TJ Santana future in I can't say it. Dog is like I'm like it's so crazy like to hold in this information and not be able to just like it's big though. It's big. It's right. like man I trust you, brother. Man, thank God. It's it's big. Okay. So <laughs> I, you know, you're you're officially declaring your, your comeback. Oh yeah, no, I'm back. I'm, what this you is. Know, I'm 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 here, dog. And you're, like, and you're not I, messing I just, around. It sounds like you're not messing around, though. No, you know? no, I did not come back to play. I didn't come back to play no games. Like, there, I just put up a post earlier today saying I did not come back to play no games. Yeah. Like, you know, we was just chopping it up, and I'm just like, dog, like, this is real. Like, I'm not the, – the, the trajectory that we're on right now, it's out of here. With the with the lead single with game on it and the second single the follow up that we have oh man it, it's crazy it's crazy mm. and following that we got the is child support is fraud a documentary it's it's crazy what's it's that crazy. you said what's that yeah so for the I am a victim of child support fraud for twenty two years due to the county of Los Angeles. Um, in 2016, I took the county of Los Angeles to court. I represented myself in a two year <laughs> hearing. Wow. In a two year hearing. And I got this case dismissed for extrinsic fraud against the county of Los Angeles. Wow. So from that point, I've been on my child supporters for like I, I have child supporters fraud.com because I didn't want my success to be an individual success. Mm -hmm. And I just start pushing the information out. And because people were asking me, it's like, man, how did you do that? Because I was documenting every step of the way. And they like, man, you know, how did you do it? How did you do it? So that's why I created child supporters fraud.com. And there I got the affidavits that I use to get myself out of that situation and other people are it's it's an educational purpose so you know mm -hmm. i got you can check it out on ig um child support is fraud you know put out a lot of educational videos there and like that like that the whole aim for that is child support reform because mm -hmm. they man they fraudulently 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 mm -hmm. obtain default judgments and once they once they got you in that is it's, it's so hard to get out and like they have their own rules and procedures that they are to follow when mm -hmm. they start these processes and we found in 99 of the cases that they don't and and, yeah. and their rules and procedures tell them if they don't follow their own rules and procedures everything after it is null and void yeah well i remember you talking a little bit about that on facebook about how you represented yourself and how you were able to, you know, be victorious. And then uh -huh. I remember thinking a few times and hearing about these other uh, child support cases. I was, I was like, man, they should holler at TJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it's yeah, it's not a, it, it's not a game. It's child supporters, child supporters fraud .com. Like we were working on a documentary right now called titled "Is Child Support Fraud." It was titled. Child support is fraud, but you know, talking with the team, they like, you know, it's a better idea if we put the is with a question mark. So that's what we're doing. Is child support fraud? That's the documentary. We got it. We we taking it back to the old school because that's where we come from. There's yeah. there's going to be a soundtrack to it. The score is it's 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 a whole rollout, and that's what I've been. That's what I've been doing as far as like entertainment, working on a documentary. So yeah. it, it's it's only right. I mean, it's just perfect timing and God how. This situation with game came about in the the second single that I got with the person that I can't name yet, but it's it, it's just all lining up and and like I said, just next week, CBS is filming right here at my shop, which I'm actually in the TV series. So wow! It's, just, it's like every it's man, I'm thank glad. God. Yeah, thank God, man. Wow, that's beautiful. Well, brother, I'm gonna go ahead and let you go. 
Uh, man, this has been an, uh, a wonderful chat, and and and, and you know, to hook up with you again, especially after all these years that we, you know we've known each other and been dealing with each other. Yes, sir. Um, you know, uh, man, I can't wait, bro. I mean, man, I, I'm excited. Oh um, man, yeah. You know, no, and, you, you you definitely you definitely gonna you be there every step of the way. I mean, and like it's 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 like I don't know if you noticed, but like the the cup like West Coast Riders dot com, you actually you know you put you featured me on the website, and like in the beginning of my solo career. Yeah. So I mean, so so it's a come full circle. Like you, we being here now is. It's my return, and here we are doing this interview. It, it everything is coming full circle, you know. I and you gonna, you, it's, it's only right that I'm about the people that been there with for me. They gonna stay there with me, so you gonna be there every step of the way. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, for sure. Yes, sir. I appreciate that, man. Before we go, can I get a shout out for the site? West Coast oh yeah, yeah, yeah yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Please what it do? Out. What it do, man? It's your boy TJ Santana. AKA TJ with the scar. And right now you tuned into WestCoastStyles.com. Yes, sir. That's what it is. All right, brother. You have yourself a wonderful evening. And man, we'll be in touch soon, bro. God bless. TJ right. Santana, future in the game is coming, baby. Yeah. Yeah.